Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Janelle Copeland, founder of The Cake Mamas, which is an award-winning bakery that I had for 12 years in Los Angeles, California. I got this comment asking me to share my backstory on how I went from having a home business to a brick and mortar in 18 months. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into that to hopefully inspire or share some stuff with you that may help you. So let's dive in. So a little backstory. In 2009, I had three kids. They were four, six, and eight, very young. We had a crazy, ridiculous mortgage payment because I live in Southern California. And everything was fine because my husband and I had great paying corporate jobs until it wasn't fine. In 2009, the company that we both worked for went out of business, so we lost our jobs. We lost all of our income. We're at a really tough time because we were, to be honest, really overextended financially. We were what you call home poor. Most of our money went towards our mortgage, and then I told you we had three small kids. They were in gymnastics, after school daycare, and we were just trying to be good parents, but we didn't have great practices around our finances. So although we made a lot of money, we also had poor spending habits and so we just weren't in a great position. Couple that with then all of your income gets taken away and we were forced to file bankruptcy. Uh, we lost a car. It was a really, really tough time. How we recovered from that just kind of sidebar because you might be feeling the strain of the recession. You may have lost your job during COVID. And if that's the case, I can definitely sympathize and I know what it feels like to be at your lowest, especially when it comes to finances. But here's what we did to quickly rebuild. We had to learn how to be better stewards of our money. So we started reading money books. We had to go to conferences. We listened to podcasts we watch YouTube videos. And if you need help with that, we did recently do a financial workshop on everything that we did to kind of pull ourselves out of that financial funk back in 2009. So I'll link it here in the show notes and you can head over and see if that's something you might be interested in. But getting your money right is probably the most important thing you can do for yourself if you're trying to be a business owner because I'm just here to tell you, if you have poor money habits with your personal finances, that will bleed into your business. Fix your money habits, fix your money mindset, and do whatever you can to learn about the game of money if you wanna be successful in business. Okay, so back to my backstory. After we lost our jobs, we immediately needed to find new jobs. The problem is, is lots of companies were going out of business and jobs were just really scarce. So my husband wound up getting into the fitness industry and I just wasn't really able to find a job. So I decided to make the most of it and out of desperation, I started you know, spending more time with my kids. I had to take them out of daycare, pick them up from school, do their homework, do all of that mom stuff that I wasn't really used to. So now we're doing homework and projects and I've got the TV on. Just so happens that the cake boss starts, right? I always had loved Ace of Cakes. I got really inspired. And honestly, I just needed to do something to get my mind off of all of my problems for my mental health. And so I made a box mix of cake. I bought some fondant, started playing around, started watching those shows, and I realized I really loved it. It was therapeutic for me. It was a creative outlet. And I had always been an artist, but really never had the chance to express it because I was so busy working for a corporation. So I started making cakes for friends and family. And then I started doing research to see what I could learn about the baking industry. And I think that that is a big thing that people skip. When you wanna start a business, the best thing you can do is start learning how bakeries operate. I had never had a background in the food industry, never had a job in the food industry. I had worked in a grocery store as my first job, but I had never worked in a commercial kitchen. So I really didn't know anything about food services. So I started there. I started looking into local bakeries. I started Googling things like how much does it cost to open a bakery? I started learning things about build out. I started learning that some people buy bakeries that have gone out of business or businesses that have gone out of business and then sometimes they come with equipment. Sometimes you have to kind of redo the kitchen. And the thing is, I didn't have money for any of that. And so that brought me to the first step of any new business owner, which is I don't have the money, so I have to make the money. 
And I think so often we come up with a great idea. Why? Because we're good at something. Maybe you're a good cookie maker. Maybe you bake really amazing pies or cakes or whatever it is. And everyone's telling you to start a business. And so the first thing you think to do is go out and take a loan. That's not the first step. The first step is you gotta start selling something so you can actually earn some money. And so I just needed to start selling. Of course, you start selling to your friends and family, which I did. And then I started just asking for referrals, you know, like, hey, do you know anybody else that might be celebrating? I know I made your cake. Do you have any other friends or family that might be celebrating anything anytime soon? While I'm getting referrals, I'm also trying to figure out how to build a website, keep that super simple, I'm trying to figure out at the time how to start social media. So you're doing all of these things while being in the beginning stages of your business. Like this is how you get from just serving Serving your friends and family to serving people you don't know is you just simply ask for referrals. So I start landing some orders. I'm obviously working from home. I obviously am running out of space, but if I did the quick math on how much money I was making and how much money I could save and all of that stuff, it's kind of just a simple formula, right? I don't have any money, so I gotta sell some stuff. I've gotta go out and buy more inventory and more products in order to make more stuff. So how much does it cost me to buy inventory and ingredients and maybe pay myself? And then whatever's left over, that's the profit, right? Obviously there's a whole formula for this, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. So I started just kind of calculating, if I make this amount of profit in one month, then how long will it take me to make this amount if this is the amount that I think that I need to open a bakery? Well, it was gonna be a really long time before I saved $300,000, which is what Google will tell you it costs to build a bakery but I knew that building wasn't something that I was gonna be able to afford. Remember, I said that I had filed bankruptcy, so going to apply for a loan was not something that I was gonna get approved for. So I needed to figure out how to make the money while still researching like the real estate market. That's where I learned, oh, okay, it's usually based per square foot. That's when I learned that certain properties can be zoned or not zoned for food products. That's when I learned that some people really did abandon their business and leave all of their equipment there. Some people trashed the place and just kind of took off and took everything with them. So I started to just kind of call on things in the very beginning stages of my business. I made some friends that were real estate agents in the commercial like uh, real estate arena because I had called numbers. And so that's kind of my gift to you in this video is what are you doing to actually just research, right? You may not be in a stage to sign a lease or to fork over money or to build your dream bakery, but couldn't you research it? Couldn't you have some figures in the back of your mind to just kind of know what your goal is or what you're striving for? I knew that those numbers were big. I knew that I needed to make money. I knew that I needed to have profit in order for the business to be able to thrive and grow. And so that's kind of the simple formula that I just attacked and repeated in the beginning parts of my business. So fast forward, month over month, I was holding myself accountable to increase sales, to increase profitability, and to see how I could expand my capacity. Obviously, I'm working from home. I start with one refrigerator, I outgrow that. So I bought a used refrigerator from Craigslist and I put it in my garage. When I outgrew that, I bought another one. And then I bought another one and then I bought a freezer. So you've gotta figure out how to get creative because lots of people come to me and say that they're ready to get into a brick and mortar. But when I ask them about their numbers and I ask them what they've done to expand capacity and I ask them about their profitability and I ask them monthly over month to show me that their business has grown, they can't. It's usually more of a feeling. Well, I feel like I've outgrown my business at home. I feel like if I was in a brick and mortar, I could serve more customers. I feel like I'm turning down so many orders so I know that I would be able to make money to pay for bills. And I'm just here to tell you like feelings don't really have a place in business. It's just math. How much money are you making? How much have you improved month over month? What's your profitability? How much money is in the bank? And how good are you getting at, you know, finding and closing and securing customers? How good are you getting at marketing while you're at home? Well, luckily for me, my background was in those things. And so I was able to apply all of the business knowledge that I had from my previous career into my business 
business to hold myself accountable as though I was a district manager kind of managing those things. So quickly we're able to put money aside in a fund to grow out of my home, which was my original goal from the very beginning. And then I had an opportunity where I found a property that this is now 18 months later. So we've got money in the bank, we've got consistent customers, I've got a website. Food Network, ironically, had already found me because I had a pretty good online presence just working from home. And we had turned them down and said that we weren't able to go on Cupcake Wars, which was a big deal at the time, because I couldn't handle any more business from home. So that's when I started to seriously, like now I know a little bit about real estate. I know what the going rate is per square foot in my city. I've got a couple of real estate friends now that I've made just by asking questions. That's when I started to get pretty serious in looking for a place. And so luckily I was able to find a place that was an abandoned pizza place. They literally left all of their refrigeration, they left their oven, they left everything. I went in, I took a look at it, the rent seemed reasonable to me. And all I needed to do was put some paint on the walls and figure out how to get the pizza oven out and get the used oven that I had sitting in my backyard because I bought it from an auction used and I just need to swap them out. So to be honest, I didn't start with a ton of money. I didn't have a ton of capital and I decided to sign a lease, which they asked for like first months, last month, the deposit. And that was kind of a lot drained, you know, a good portion of my bank account. And then I remember needing to go inventory shopping to prepare for, you know, opening a bakery for the grand opening. That was gonna be thousands of dollars for me to go shopping and I wasn't really anticipating all of that, right? So in my class, Passion to Profit, I walk through this whole lengthy story and I give you this whole breakdown of all of the costs that kind of come with a grand opening. You wanna be able to have some money for marketing. You wanna be able to sell thousands of products to you know, hopefully thousands of customers in your community. That means you need thousands of boxes or bags or whatever it is that you're selling and all of those things were things that I was kind of just like taking money from here. I remember at the last minute, I pulled some money out of my 401k, paid a penalty on that. And so I try to teach my students now that there are steps you need to take so you're not kind of scrambling at the last minute. But ultimately, this was the third location that we found that we thought that we really, really liked that we could make work. The other two we fell in love with, we cried about because we wound up not getting those at the last minute. But this one was something that wound up working out, so we didn't want it to pass us by. We signed the lease, we put some paint on the inside, refreshed it, I paid for a sign. Did you know the sign on the outside of your business can be upwards of five to 10 to $12,000, depending on the font, if it's lit, all these things. And um, then we were able to grand open. So that happened in a time frame of lost my job in November, April 2009, I started making, I made my first cake. Getting into October of 2011, we actually grand opened. So that's kind of my backstory. There's so much more to share in there, so please let me know what your questions are. I can do a lengthier video if you want, but um, there's so many things that went wrong. There's so many things that we were heartbroken about. There were so many money issues and so much stress around trying to make sure that we could keep it alive and we could hire employees and we had enough money. And the truth is, is ultimately it comes down to the habits that you establish while you're working from home. If I wouldn't have taken those 18 months to really get good at operating the business and marketing the business from home, I definitely wouldn't have been set up for success when I decided to sign the lease. And I see so many aspiring business owners romanticizing the idea of running a brick and mortar, thinking that it's going to make you a ton of money but I also have tons of DMs that are full of business owners saying, I have no traffic coming into my brick and mortar and I really need your help. And so those are some things that I can recommend. Start small, start at home, really truly outgrow it from a financial standpoint, from a capacity standpoint, 
And then when you get into your brick and mortar, you'll have time under your belt, you'll have experience, you'll know what you're doing, you'll know how to multitask and manage all of this stuff, and you'll be set up for better success. So I hope this story was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And there's tons of ways that we can connect and I can share more, but I'd love to see what you guys have to say about this. And tell me what your story is. Where are you at in your journey? Are you still working from home? Are you hoping to graduate into a brick and mortar? Are you running a brick and mortar and it's not everything you hoped it would be? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to connect with you and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.